Today, FTX sues Voyager for more than $400 million to claw back 2022 loan payments. An independent examiner's report finds Celsius engaged in Ponzi-like behavior, and Chen Arad of Solidus Labs discusses the digital asset monitoring firm's new research on crypto enforcement action. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Tanea McKeel. Digital currencies are back in the green after yesterday's sell-off. By noon Eastern, Bitcoin jumped back above $23,000, Ether traded just below $1,600, and Polygon's Matic token rose to $1.11. Bitcoin is on pace to post a roughly 39% gain for January, which would be its best month since October 2021, and that's coming off a 64% decline for 2022. Ether has risen 31% this month. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. First, FTX sued Voyager Digital yesterday, seeking to claw back more than $445 million in loan repayments that the bankrupt crypto exchange made before collapsing in November. After Voyager filed for bankruptcy in July, the crypto lender demanded repayment of all outstanding loans to FTX and its sister hedge fund Alameda Research. In a court filing, FTX said it paid Voyager nearly $250 million in September and $194 million in October on Alameda's behalf. Court filings also show the exchange made a $3.2 million interest payment in August. FTX's complaint says that because those loan payments were made so close to its own bankruptcy filing, they're eligible to be clawed back and potentially used to pay back other FTX creditors. We reached out to Voyager about the lawsuit, but as of noon Eastern, we hadn't heard back. Next, an independent examiner says Celsius misled customers and misrepresented its business. The probe was ordered by a federal bankruptcy court judge, and it found that Celsius was using customer holdings as collateral as well as buying up sell tokens, what it was paying to customers as rewards, to push that token's price higher and higher. In the report, which was released this morning, Celsius's coin deployment specialist described the practice of using customer stablecoins and growing short in customer coins to buy sell as very Ponzi-like. Celsius didn't warn customers about the token purchases and instead said the price was going up on its own. At the same time, though, the report found that the company's top executives, like founder Alex Mashinsky, benefited most from the token's rally. Mashinsky currently faces fraud allegations in the U.S. We reached out to Celsius, but did not immediately hear back. Finally, digital asset manager Osprey Funds is suing Grayscale Investments over its Bitcoin trust, better known as GBTC. In the suit, Osprey accuses Grayscale of making false and misleading statements in its advertising and promotion of GBTC, allegedly telling customers they'd get access to a spot Bitcoin ETF Grayscale knew wouldn't happen. The SEC has repeatedly rejected applications for Bitcoin ETFs, including multiple attempts from Grayscale to convert GBTC into an ETF. A Grayscale spokesperson called the lawsuit, quote, frivolous, and in a statement sent to us, argued that the conversion of GBTC to an ETF is the best long-term product structure for Grayscale's investors, and approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF in the United States would directly benefit our industry peers. The spokesperson added that Grayscale is looking forward to a final decision from the D.C. Court of Appeals by this fall. All right, on to our main story. New research from Solidus Labs out today reveals regulators engaged in more crypto-related enforcement than in any other year in the industry's existence. Crypto World's Talia Kaplan spoke with Ren Arad, one of the founders of the digital asset monitoring company, about the research, what stood out most, and the big takeaways in his first interview since the report came out. Take a listen. Solidus Labs released a report today highlighting enforcement actions on the crypto industry and found that U.S. regulators broke records last year. Now, in the report, you note that the four main federal regulators with authority over crypto, so that's the SEC, CFTC, the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, and the Office of Foreign Assets Control, announced 58 crypto-related enforcement actions combined. That's a 65% jump compared to 2021. Did that number surprise you? And what does it signal exactly? It didn't surprise me. And let me first say, you know, I've been in this industry for about five plus years now. And it, every year, you know, when we start summarizing the past year and looking forward to the next year, we always say that, you know, this year was unprecedented in terms of regulation and enforcement and that next year is going to be the biggest year yet. And to be honest with you, you know, and it's good to validate it with numbers. Uh, and that's part of why, you know, as, as a company that's working to make the industry safer, it's really important for us to monitor and analyze that. And uh, so, to, so I, I'll say, you know, the, the fact that the number has grown, uh, you know, does not surprise me. 
Uh, but it is really interesting to look into the details here. Uh, and I'll just share a few numbers beyond, beyond this, uh, you know, 65% growth overall. So, you know, if in 2021, we saw 38 uh, enforcement actions that are crypto specific in total in the US, this year 58. In addition to that, it's important to mention, uh, you know, that we're talking already about uh, around 3.4 billion in fines uh, and disgorgement fees since 2013. So, you know, enforcement, you know, is, is really starting to take a big toll. And we saw some of the biggest fines uh, and settlements this year. Uh, we're seeing a lot of state activity. You know, uh, the crypto industry often, you know, thinks when we think about state regulation, we immediately think about New York, Wyoming, some of those states that have very advanced uh, or progressive approaches. But, you know, uh, what we found that, you know, 16 states in 2022 uh, issued their first crypto enforcement actions. And that the leader there is actually Texas overall, which since 2017 has uh, enforced against uh, 58 cases. So you just mentioned this one, but one point that stood out to me in this report was that 24 state regulators broke crypto records last year. And you said this, that 16 announced their first crypto action. So does this mean that those scammers out there better watch out now that federal and a growing number of state regulators are cracking down? I mean, 100%. Any way you look at it, enforcement is increasing. It's increasing for two main reasons. A, we've seen a lot of malicious activity and with, uh, you know, uh, some really big kind of high stake incidents this year, like Terra Luna, like FTX, uh, you know, th that's a big part of why regulators are more proactive. And yes, I have no doubt that it will deter uh, people as we see more of this. At the same time, it's also just a factor of regulators wrapping their mind around the space and starting to understand the problems. Uh, what's important to say here is that what's really interesting to me when I look at some of these enforcement actions is, for example, you know, if we look agency by agency, uh, you know, the SEC generally has had the most enforcement actions against crypto firms historically. But what we're starting to see here are some really interesting cases that are really going to impact how the law sees crypto. So when it comes to this question of is crypto a security or not, that's obviously in the SEC's wheelhouse. Uh, you know, we're seeing interesting cases like... Uh, library versus like the SEC versus library where essentially for the first time a, a court in New Hampshire actually argued that that particular crypto uh, LBRY the protocol is considered a security if you're looking at the CFTC we're seeing a very dramatic increase 73 percent more enforcement actions than last year um, you know and by the way which also means that out of the entire CFTC uh, enforcement actions crypto and non-crypto uh, crypto is now 22 percent compared to six uh, in 2021. So just to say that we're also seeing the attention of those regulators increasingly di diverting towards crypto. But specifically with the CFTC, we're also seeing a, really, a couple of really unique cases. First of all, their lawsuit against Avraham Eisenberg, which uh, was the perpetrator, allegedly, of the Mango Markets hack. That is a very unique instance of market manipulation enforcement because it really looks both uh, on-chain and off-chain. It's very DeFi-specific. And the last one I'll mention is, of course, CFTC versus Uki DAO, which is the first action against a DAO, a, a, you know, a, a decentralized autonomous organization. So we're also seeing the, the fact that regulators better understand the space and are starting to uh, look at very crypto specific cases and apply existing regulation on top of them. I believe all of that should very much serve uh, a, to, to deter and, and make uh, scammers wary and ultimately gradually uh, push them out of the space. A, you know, a, and, and I know that the industry is very much collaborating and doing its best on, on its side to deal with those issues. For more than a year, we have seen the SEC embrace regulation by enforcement since right now, the digital asset space is not really regulated. So do you think that's the right approach or do you think there's a better way? I think there's no one who would argue that regulation by enforcement is ideal, not even the regulators themselves. I think the general leaders consensus in the industry and among regulators and legislators that ideally, uh, a regulation, you know, should not be by enforcement, but rather uh, through the, 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 you know, the others, the, the opposite, which is clear, very clear, specific rules that are, you know, easy to abide by. However, it also, it takes a lot of time to develop these kinds of rules. And I have to tell you something. I mean, a lot of people might disagree with me, but, you know, I actually think that regulation in crypto is moving very fast. If you look at how it moved in certain other, you know, historically, uh, you're already seeing regulators who understand, you know, kind of the nuances and crevices of things like, on and off chain market manipulation, and we'll see that regulation coming. But uh, uh, even though it's not ideal, you know, the last year in crypto and the amount of people who were hurt was also very much not ideal. And it is the responsibility of regulators to do what they can to apply existing rules. I think, yet yeah, to your question, it's not ideal regulation by enforcement. It's 
a natural part of the evolution of regulation. And uh, at the end of the day, it's also needed at the moment, as you implied, to deter bad actors. Can you take us through some of the other enforcement actions that stood out to you in your new report, specifically those imposed by the Office of Foreign Assets Control? OFAC specifically is the office uh, that is responsible for issuing and enforcing sanctions. That is, when there is a uh, foreign entity or even potentially a, you know, a non-foreign entity that for whatever reason, uh, the United States decided uh, needs to be uh, sanctioned against in one way or another, essentially, um, you know, basically uh, uh, detached from uh, the global financial system. That's really what sanctions do. Uh, you know, uh, then OFAC will, will get involved. Obviously, this was a big year. First of all, because there was, uh, you know, sanctions became a really big deal in relation to Ukraine, um, uh, uh, you know, when, when, when sanctions were placed over Russia. And, and they're generally a, an important tool the U.S. uses uh, in its foreign policy. Uh, but also OFAC, you know, perhaps uh, took one of its most dramatic actions in crypto this year by sanctioning uh, Tornado Cash, essentially to try and put it out of business. Tornado Cash, for those uh, who might not recognize the name, was one of the most popular mixer, mixing services. So essentially, uh, it was a way, it was a certain, you could transfer your money in yeah, crypto into it. And when it would come out, it would be very hard to associate um, who put that money in, which is, of course, a very useful tool for anyone who's trying to make the money trail disappear. Those are oftentimes criminals, uh, obviously not always, but uh, oftentimes criminals or uh, you know, people who, are tr you know, who, who made illicit funds and are trying to launder them. Um, you know, that, that's, you know, that, that was very dramatic for the industry because it touched on this question of, you know, can you even regulate or enforce against a decentralized service? Uh, and again, there, you know, the Tornado was decentralized to a degree, but the bottom line there is technically anyone could copy that code and just create another exchange. And the question is whether the liquidity will come. That was a really big uh, debate in the industry this year. Uh, so OFAC was actually very central. Okay, that's all for Crypto World today, but we'll be back again tomorrow. So we'll see you then.